All right, one to the two, two to the three, and the place to be. Welcome to the Impact Lounge, Impact Wrestling Review for episode 19, October 2017. This is your host, BQ. I've got Ro the Great with me, talking Impact just like we do each and every week. As always, the review is brought to you by Draft. If you enjoy playing fantasy sports and playing for money, hit playdraft.com slash BQ. That's playdraft.com slash BQ. I know I play NBA and have had a pretty good season so far, so definitely check it out. All right, Ro, before we even get into this review, um, and I feel like shit, this, the weather here in Illinois is starting to, starting to get cold and everything, so I, I can foresee myself having a difficult time speaking uh, throughout this podcast here. Uh, but I'm going to do my best. So uh, I want to hear real quick your thoughts on uh, Taryn Terrell and you know uh, if, if people subscribe to my channel and uh, with that being said please hit subscribe whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on but if you heard my rant about Taryn Terrell on YouTube um, I'm usually a pretty laid-back guy and I really went off about this and uh, I want to know what your thoughts are of this whole Taryn Terrell situation where they've dedicated time to a storyline and then just pull the plug out of nowhere and um, it's just another star this year to just come and go. Yeah, um, it's just annoying, man, because I feel like this happens way too frequently with this company. Um, nah, my my problem with it, my problem with it though is, you know, you bring someone back. It's not even so much her departuring. It's more it has to do with the fact you bring someone in. You know, you already have you know women on the roster such as Ava Story and um, MJ Jenkins. We don't know what they're capable of yet. You bring Taryn back, and then you know I'm was of the mindset she's in a feud with Gail Kim. I have no problem with that. It keeps Gail out of the title picture. It's something different. No, you put her in you know a big match on one of your biggest shows, if not the biggest show that the company has to offer, and then you know she just leaves. And it, it just kills a card. And it's just, once again, you know, they dedicate time to people who come over for a short period of time and then they depart. You know, it's just a slap in the face. And I mean, if I'm somebody on the roster when they're trying to, you know, sign new people, why would I be encouraged to sign with the company knowing that, hey, you're going to keep me on board. You know, I'm going to have to wait my time. But then someone else who's been here before from another company, they're going to come right in. They're not going to have to earn their stars and stripes. They're going to just be pushed to the moon. So it's just, it's unfortunate, you know, it's nothing against her, you know, she's free to leave and do whatever, but this company, it, they just seem to not get it. Yeah, and she is free to leave, absolutely, but as I said on my YouTube rant and everything, if you weren't going to be dedicated to doing this, why did you come back? Why did the company bring her back? I mean, I get it, things happen, things come up. But you shouldn't be in that loose of a contract where you just, hey, you know, something, something came. I can't make, I can't make Bound for Glory. Sorry. Oh, you can't. Okay, that's cool. And I, I think something that that really uh, upset me that I didn't really talk about on, the, on on YouTube, like they had the gall, the gumption to on the show just say Taryn Terrell will not be avail available Bound for Glory after suffering a concussion from being slapped by Gail Kim. Like, are you going to disrespect the the audience and the fans that badly with that kind of bullshit? Yeah, it, it was silly. And then even, too, um, on the Twitter page, they had put a quotation. So it just seemed like it was, um, you know, insinuating that that's what they're – they're going by that it wasn't really accurate i mean there were so many different ways they could have done it obviously with them being so you know having taping so far in advance you can't really change on the fly i mean a perfect way if they were able to would have been like you know do an angle where she you know gets put out you know and she's out and then later on you can release like hey she's um no longer with a company but i don't know like just for me it, i think if she would have been in some you know one-off match at the pay-per-view it wouldn't have bothered me a, as much but i look at it as like she's in the knockouts title match you know lvn could have been in this position you know the girls that i mentioned you know ava story and uh, uh mj jenkins you could have done a multi knockouts match and you know, it would have been fine you know but you put her in one of the biggest big matches of the pay-per-view and then for this to happen it's just sustained but you know what this company just doesn't get it man they tend to do it over and over and over i just don't understand right and this was the um as i said on 
um, in my previous rant, this was the best build of a match they had for Bound for Glory. And now you're getting a triple threat, which doesn't work as well when it's a heel and two baby faces. It's it's much more uh, difficult to, to book. So, man, you know, there, there's so many different directions they could have gone rather than doing something so so lazy and um, and non-committal. I mean, I, I if you're going to do these short-term deals, I get it. But, God, like sometimes there's a point where you got to see things through. And, you know, they tape so infrequently. It's like you you can't tell me that uh, she couldn't have uh, done Bound for Glory. <laughs> you know, even if you didn't do the set of tapings after or whatever. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think too, and I, I know you had mentioned this um, on the YouTube, but I think what's happening and what why we're seeing this happen so frequently, you know, so much changing of the guard. I think, you know, when she was brought in, I don't know, I think, I want to say Jarrett, you know, was, you know, still a part, you know, maybe he had something to do with it. And, you know, we know, you know, when you work for somebody and, you know, the people who brought you in for whatever reason, they depart and then a new regime comes in, you know, usually they want their people. And so, you know, they'll, they'll question your loyalty or whatever the case may be. So, you know, maybe they didn't see Taryn in the same light as, you know, maybe Jared or whomever else brought her in. So that that's another thing too that that's been plaguing this company. So much changing, changing, you know, backstage, you know, you see certain individuals who were brought in because, you know, this group of people were behind, you know, that particular wrestler. So then when they leave, then, you know, the wrestler just there, just kind of, you know, just there. So. Yeah, it's, it's too much changing behind the scenes every single set of tapings. We haven't had one consistent set of tapings yet in 2017. And it's now 2018 is almost here and it's, hey, we're starting over again. I mean, that's that's really what it feels like. And, I mean, you go out of your way to do a photo shoot with her, two, two photo shoots. Um, you know, obviously her theme song was not something that they just grabbed from the uh, unreleased stash in the back. I mean, that was something, obviously, they, you know... Um, really put some effort into so just uh i don't even want to get into it anymore because i'm gonna get all pissed off again but let's get into the actual episode of impact um we're gonna do our best folks here to be as positive as possible because that is the you know the voice we try to speak in when we cover impact um but I, i'm not gonna i i'm gonna be honest this is the third week in a row that i just thought the show was awful um, you, you know, they started off the tapings really hot, you know, and uh, man, and this uh, Bound for Glory build has been awful. And, uh, you know, the matches themselves on the show have not been too bad. But the way I kind of look at it is that there's been so many changes that they've had to edit out so many things that they're just replacing them with video packages. And, I mean, God, this episode, I think we saw a couple of the same, a couple of the video packages twice, kind of like we complained with the first GFW Amped anthology, um, that they kept playing the same video packages over and over, and that's what this felt like. Um, let's get into it though. <laughs> Again, we're gonna try our, our best to be positive here, but this just wasn't wasn't enjoyable um, for me at all. But you know, there are there's always gonna be things I I, I do like and things I don't like. So, uh, kicks off with Johnny Impact versus Chris Adonis. You know, I, I guess this was, you know, carrying over from the previous week or Chris Adonis hit him with the board. They really could have spent some time on a... Obviously, in pro wrestling, you go against a champion, you're probably going to fight his crew along the way. But this was just done so quick and so rushed. You know, they actually probably could have built this for a couple of weeks and, and, you know, put on something decent. And I think it just goes to show what they truly think of Chris Adonis to where... It was the opening match of the card. Or the opening card. I'm sorry. Yeah, the opening match of the card. Johnny Impact was supposed to be the main eventer. Opening match. But what do you got on this one? Johnny Impact versus Chris Adonis. Um, before I get into it, just to go off of what you were saying with the tapings, I'm in agreement with you. You know, these last, you know, set of episodes of Impact have just been, you know, subpar. And, you know, with the little optimism that I do have is, you know, after Bound for Glory, since we're going to get a new set, you know, with the changes in effect, hopefully, you know, there's some stability there. And, you know, a lot of the, you know, shows moving forward, you know, there'll be some consistency. But um, as far as this match, um, 
you know, I feel like then did they not compete a couple weeks ago? I, I believe we had we had this match a couple weeks ago or so. But um, I mean, it was whatever. I mean, like you said, you know, a lot of times when, you know, you you have a feud and, you know, one of the participants has a lackey because that's what Adonis is. Um, you're going to you have to, you know, go through the lackey before, you know, you get to the champion. But it was fine. No big deal. I mean, hey, I'm glad it wasn't a main event. I didn't feel like this was main event caliber. So harmless. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we were talking about it before the couple times Adonis has been on the GFW amped. I mean, they made him seem like a much bigger deal when he's on impact. It's just kind of like, oh, great. Here, here's this guy again. But I think he's pretty serviceable in the role that he that he plays. I'm just, you know, the the match was just kind of whatever. And even the finisher at the end, you know, he he did a flip and kind of landed on his feet, so it didn't really get the full impact of it and it was okay, you know, it I think the big killer here is this is the, you know, the back half of the tapings and the crowd is, you know, they started really hot the first few weeks and now they're back to being dead and when you're trying to build up to bound for glory that's very difficult to do with slammiversary when they were in india you know as, as silly as it came across at times you know at least there was energy in the in the arena and it made for a pretty decent build but here you're trying to build up to your biggest show and the fans are just kind of phoning it in like that guy in the front row dressed like one of the chris brothers um you know just sitting on his hands um, a few, a few of those fans are just, just sitting on their hands. Very frustrating. Um, that guy cracks me up. So I, so not to cut you off, I'm sorry, but that guy cracks me up because I'll watch sometimes, and the first thing I think is, what's uh, OVE doing out there? What's the one guy from OVE doing out there? And then I have to tell myself that's a fan because, you know, with the tapings and stuff, we're seeing the same crowds. So <laughs> I always see that guy, and I'm thinking, like, you know, where where is his brother at? And it's like, that's just the fan, the super fan, so... He does look just like him. Um, it's funny, if you're going to go out of your way that much to dress like a wrestler, you would think you'd be in the front row there with just all sorts of energy, you know, and, and the dude has zero. And not, not to single him out, but there, there's quite a few in that front row, obviously, that that um, that do this to us every single set of taping. So I, I'm really looking forward to Canada. You know, and, and you hear when the stars are talking about Canada and they talk about the UK, whatever, there was, oh, the fans are crazy, the fans are crazy. Like, it's just, we're just not crazy in the United States. That's really what it is. We're, um, you know, I say we, I'm a, I'm a resident here. We're very entitled. We're very, uh, we, we take things for granted that we have. And um, that's just the way we are. And in, in other countries, they're not, they're not like that. They appreciate everything that they have. And I'm not saying Canada is a third world country. They appreciate, you know, food and water. I'm just, I'm just saying here in the States, we have everything we could possibly want at our fingertips and we're complacent for those reasons. And, you know, a country like Canada who does not get impact on a regular basis, obviously they're going to treat it completely different, just like the UK would do the same and any other place they travel. So I think this is going to be really good for the company, really good for the for the tapings and I'm, I'm looking forward to it quite a bit so the next match that we get um what well, i think we had I, I think we had a um a post uh match attack when drake after the match with adonis and uh impact that's right eli drake attacked him after the match and and this has probably been you know for the last few main events we've had at the pay-per-view this this one has felt the le the least uh momentum you know um they're trying something new here with eli drake in the main event scene and that's you know obviously he wasn't pushed like that previously so it's going to be difficult for it to just you know him make him to be a, a big deal all of a sudden but yeah i don't remember anything special about this beat down um you, you got anything on it yeah um you know he attacked the uh, impact and then uh, garza came out for the save and i guess that's one positive they're you know, they're being consistent, you know, showing that I guess Garza is going to be, you know, it, mixing it up with some of these main eventers. The only thing I didn't like about it, though, was he, you know, he helped save Impact, then he's all hugging it up with Impact. Like, I would have liked to see kind of like that look like, 
you know what, you've got the best of me, but, you know, when it's my time, you know, hey, I want that belt, you know, too, and stuff like that. But, I mean, it's just progress- progressing. I think that's one thing, you know, that's one angle, the feud between uh, Impact and uh, Eli Drake that they've at least been somewhat consistent with. I feel like uh, Garza's getting a lot of TV time right now for someone who's not even on the card for Bound for Glory. And maybe he will be in the future. Um, it, it just his his push here is extremely random. Um, I don't really get it. Uh, a lot of people have said, "Oh, I, you know," I, they've said this since we saw Garza to begin with on Impact. Oh, he could be a main eventer and everything. I, I don't see it, but I'm happy to see him getting the opportunity. I just wish there was more more behind it, and we knew exactly what was going on with it yeah i Um, i think for you know best case scenario assuming that they have this match um i could see him in the bound for gold and he'd probably be one of my favorites to to win it like if you give him something like that where he uh you know he wins and he has a future title shot that's something that you know you're not pushing him right away but you could build towards so then once he does cash in on that title opportunity you know it's it seemed like a more of a big deal compared to you know, just a random title match. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm in agreement with you. You know, they do some of these random um, pushes of people and then they just stop. If you're going to commit to to him, you know, commit to him. And it, it doesn't even necessarily have to be challenging for for the uh, world title. You know, it could be the grand or exhibition or anything. Just commit to it. That's just my big thing. We've got two weeks left before Bound for Glory. And I mean, they still... They have several matches they still need to announce. I mean, this this build has just been just so bad. And I, I hate talking bad about the company. I really do. I, I love it, you know, more than anything when it comes to this wrestling game. But, God dang. Um, we get So we get one of two matches um, from outside of the Impact Zone this episode. So we get a, a AAA. We get James Storm. This is a five-way now. Uh, James Storm versus Tejano versus Fantasma versus Eddie Edwards versus EC3. So I thought this was, you know, anytime we can get the Impact Stars in front of a large audience, I think that's a really good thing for them, or I think it's a really good thing for television. The match was, you know, it, I mean, I like the match. I like the actual action. But from a creative standpoint, it just made such little sense because... They're all going at against each other. Like I'm, I'm assuming this is supposed to build on a to a three on three match at Bound for Glory. I mean, I, I think that's pretty obvious. But this wasn't the way to do it, and um, it seems like this was just a match that they had at AAA, and they they found a way to turn it into a storyline later on. You know, it, um, it was just the, the action was really random. You know, Tejano and Phantasma were going at it, and. It wasn't like a. It didn't feel Impact versus Triple A at all. I mean, it was every man for himself as it should be, but just the way it was booked just didn't seem like like the correct build up to a three on three match or whatever it was. Uh, what are your thoughts on this one? Um, to me, you know, when the match was advertised, I kind of just took it. It was pointless until I realized it was a match that they were doing over there because I'm like, you're having a five man match. What are they fighting for? You know, this would have been. You know, good if you had, you know, with the grand title, then have, you know, the, the rules and stipulations that it has, because it would have been a perfect way to defend the, the belt. You know, you put the you put the belt on EC3, you know, I can't remember the last time he's defended it. And then, you know, I didn't have so much a problem with the match. The match was fine. I think just what annoys me is, you know, EC3... James Storm, and then to a lesser extent, you know, nothing against Eddie Edwards, because um, I look at him more of as an upper mid card guy. But these are the big stars of the company, and they're stuck in a feud with with Triple uh, A. And nothing against the Triple A guys, I I like them. I just feel like they could be uh, James Storm, at least EC3 could be utilized such in a better uh, fashion. You know that that feud that they had, you know, it just kind of just you know, went out the window and all of a sudden now they're teaming up and it's, I mean, just the inconsistency, man. But uh, outside of that, as far as the match wise, it, it was fine. It's like the main eventers are in the mid card and the mid carders are in the main. Exactly. Event for, for bound for glory. So it just comes across really awkward. Um, there was a segment 
in uh, Tijuana with Crash where OVE wanted to meet with Conan, which I don't know why. They already got the titles. And, uh, you know, they're supposed to be a match of Bound for Glory. They already accepted it. And maybe they got jumped last week, but I didn't understand why they wanted to meet with Conan. Like, what was the whole point to that? And he said, well, you can meet with Conan if you defend your titles tonight. And, and I mean, these guys should not have taken the titles off LAX. You know, as, with all the momentum LAX had, I don't think these guys have built anything. And it's not doing a whole lot for me. I, I fully believe the match is going to be really good at Bound for Glory, but creatively it's not it's not doing much for me. We get a match that uh, on paper looks really enjoyable. Desmond Xavier versus Andrew Everett. You know, we, we've talked about Desmond Xavier not being on TV. He wins the Super X Cup. He should be involved in the title match in one way, shape, or form, which maybe he will be, but... You know, the Super X Cup, they've made it very clear that this is basically a one-night-only program. You know, you can win it. It's whatever. It's just like winning Queen of the Knockouts. It's like winning, uh, you know, the the 100 Gs with um, uh, Joker's Wild. It's it just all one-night-only type shit where the, the outcome means absolutely nothing. The match for what it was, uh, I, I think, was pretty good because these are two guys who really really um, embody what the X Division style should be. So for that reason, I liked it very much. I do kind of like this whole Cult of Lee thing with the three of them together and dressing together. I'm always talking about 80s wrestling and, you know, tag teams, they, they're they dressed alike, they look alike. I kind of get that vibe again a little bit, and that's something that I, I like quite a bit with this whole thing. But they, they rely on a lot of outside distractions during the matches, which which they should. You shouldn't have a heel on the outside of the ring who isn't providing some kind of distraction. But it almost seems like they rely on all that stuff a little bit too much. Um, and you know, and again, also we we've like we've talked about before, we have no explanation why Andrew Everett is back with Trevor Lee, none whatsoever. And um, what do you got on? Uh, Desmond Xavier versus Andrew Everett. Um, I feel this match, and I get it as far as, you know, being when you have the, uh, you're in a stable, you know, the hill interference. But I think in a match with these two participants, it wasn't needed. I would have liked them to get, you know, enough time just to go at it. But it was good, but I look at it like, God, man, both these guys, you know, Desmond Xavier, you know, he had all this momentum upon winning the Super X Cup. Then you had Andrew Everett before the injury. You know, he was racking up wins, high momentum and stuff. I just feel like now it's trying to build both these guys back up. And I just don't want to see Andrew Everett be just some lackey. I I feel, I mean, Caleb Conley, I feel like right now works in that role fine. But with Andrew Everett, like, I think if they really get behind him, we could see something special. With that said, um, I just hope if they're going to, like I was saying with Garza, if they're going to commit to Desmond Xavier, they should do it. I think that could be their next, you know, homegrown star, but they got to commit to him. My opinion on this Andrew Everything, I think they're just hitting the res the reset button. I think they're going to try to find uh, the magic that I had at one point where he, you know, they turned on him and he was building up to the X Division victory. I think they're hitting the reset button on all that. Um, I think they're cheering, te teaming him back with Lee, and I think they're going to build eventually to breaking off from him again, try to recapture that magic. So we get some... <sighs> I hated this so much. Um, the the storyline with Grado and Joseph Park. So the whole Visa thing happened, which with the whole story with Laurel and everything, that was cool. And then... Uh, you know, Joseph Park signs him to his um, agency or, or whatever it is. And we get three weeks, only three weeks of, you know, uh, first, first week it was they were at dinner. The royalty check wasn't that big. The second week was the meet and greet to where Joseph Park pocketed most of the money. But Grado still got like a couple hundred bucks, but seemed to be pretty happy. 
And then the next week is the whole Joseph Park in the car with the girls. And there's, oh, here's the meal ticket. All of a sudden, Grado's just, like, furious. And now he's in the ring, like, beside himself. Like, you know, uh, Joseph Park, you know, get your thieving ass to the ring. I don't even think the people in the Impact Zone had any clue what was going on. Because those were all backstage segments. And they have them ha- happened all so quickly. I don't even think they understood the storyline. I really don't. Um, just but you know, from being someone who's been a, in, in the audience before and kind of know, knowing what what we do know and what we don't know, there's I I don't think they had a clue what was going on here. So Joseph Park comes out and they treat this angle like he has been screwing Grado over for months, years. But it's all it's been all of three weeks and only one time where Grado even appeared that upset. Uh, and this led to a match. At Bound for Glory, um, where it's going to be Abyss versus Grado, and it's going to be a Monsters Ball, which we haven't seen one of those in a while, and I think we all know Grado is going to win this match somehow. So this this does nothing for me, like absolutely zero. Ah, uh, what are your thoughts on it? You know what? They had me at the moment because I thought. Um... I mean, I guess it doesn't make much sense for Grado to turn heel. But when he came out there, because we're so accustomed to Grado being, you know, a comedy character. And when he came out there, you know, I was expecting him, you know, I guess as crazy as it sounds, but, you know, to beat up on uh, Parks. And I thought that would have been cool because it's like, okay, you're giving us a different Grado. This is not this comedy character, you know, you're, you know, you're going to make him be, you know, this badass or whatever. So, you know, he was all passionate with the promo. And then once he found out he's going to face Abyss, then the comedy comes back. You know, we see it when he's in, in the car car with, and James Mitchell appears. You know, he's acting all goofy and whatnot. So now I'm like thinking to myself, if Grado's supposed to win, you, w- w- how are they really going to present Grado beating Abyss? You know, if you were saying him versus Parks, all right. But against Abyss, because, you know, Abyss is perceived as, you know, a monster Abyss. But, yeah, they they had me for a minute with this angle. And then it's just now it's just whatever. I mean, they've, you know, done so many twists and turns with it, you know, from the LVN stuff to, you know, this is whatever. So in Tijuana, we get OVE versus Black Diamond and Black Danger. And, again, this was this was fine for what it was. I think I do enjoy... When they show matches in ent- in their entirety, from uh you know Crash or AAA, because I think it's something different, and it's kind of just good to get out of that impact zone crowd for a little bit. So, but it was a very quick match, and I, I don't know what they were trying to accomplish with it, but you know they went and they looked for uh, Conan afterwards, looking for their pay, and and Conan's like, I didn't say I was gonna pay you. And then it really, it just still really went nowhere. Like, I just I just didn't understand the whole inclusion of L- LAX and AAA in this whole thing. I mean, the pay-per-view is two weeks away. LAX has had one match since then, since they lost the titles as a squash match. And really, it hasn't been good for LAX the last few months. I mean, they went that three or four weeks in a row where they were just jobbing out to El Patron. This is just... Again, I think the match is going to be pretty good, but the the build to the match has been been really poor. But I mean, I can say that about every single match on here, except for, I guess you know, I can't say the Americans' top team angle was was done poorly. It was just a little bit of overkill at one point, but I don't think it was. You know, it's been done poorly by any means. Speaking of Americans' top team, so this was probably the best part of the show. Where Borash was in the ring, and then he, you know, American's top team comes, shoves him over, and Dan, Dan Lambert cuts his promo a little lengthy, but he had my attention. He started bringing out the belts and talking about what a big pro wrestling fan he is, you know, playing up the crowd. I mean, this was a good heel promo, better than a lot of the heels in wrestling know how to do. We always talk about. We're a heel. We're going to go out there and be a cool heel. Like, he actually went out there, tried to generate some heat. And I thought he did a really good job. I mean, for someone who's not in the wrestling industry like that, um, he did good. What you think of it? Yeah. Um, this was about the only time, 
you know, with anything involving America's top team that I found enjoyable. Uh, he did a, a swell job on the mic. Um, it was pretty cool, you know, him bringing out all the title belts and explaining, you know, his uh, wrestling fandom. Because I'm sure a lot of people there, and he, he probably made some good points. There's a lot of fans, you know, that probably don't know. And I mean, that's it's unfair. It doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, you know, you don't know anything just because we all grown, grew up in different wrestling gears. But um, yeah, it, it was interesting. Yeah, I enjoyed it quite a bit. So they a challenge, it sounded like they challenged uh, Lashley and King Mo challenging Stephen Bonner and Moose. So it sounds like that's the match we're going to get at the pay-per-view, which I'll, I'll have interest in that one. What do you think is the biggest candidate for the final deletion style match at Bound for Glory? Um, I'm, I'm thinking it's either going to be this match, uh, the Great and Joseph Park match, or Rosemary and Taya. And we'll, we'll get to that, what we think the stipulation is for that later. But do you, do you think any of these matches might, you know, might, uh, be the final deletion of Bound for Glory? Nah, um, I'm. If I had to choose one, I'll include this. I mean, I'm assuming they're gonna, you know, all the, it's all the actions gonna take place in the ring. If you gave me a candidate, I would have say that 5150 Street Street Fight with a uh, OVE in LAX. Assuming they, you know, fight outside of, uh, you know, the ring. But uh, those three, I, I just can't. I can't see it. I, I just don't see it. Yeah, I think I think you make a good point there. I think I think OVE and LAX could very much do that, especially since they've already said you know it's all of us against the two of you. So it kind of teases, you know, um, maybe them looking for some help, especially to um, combat Diamante, because I know they have a sister in the wrestling industry. I, I last I knew she was injured, so I don't know if she could be uh, used or not, but. Um, so let's get to the main event. This is Rosemary versus Taya. And uh, when, I have, when I have time this week, I actually want to rewatch this match. I feel like I didn't get too appreciated for everything that it was. Because by the time this came out, or by, by the time this match came on, I was kind of checked out. I was I was just kind of bored from some of the other stuff going on. I woke up a little bit with the Dan Lambert thing because I did like it. But, you know, the first the first half of the show, I just really didn't enjoy too much. But we get Rosemary versus Taya, the main event, and I thought the match was good. Uh, I will say the the finish was. I don't think the finish was flat necessarily. It just it did happen out of nowhere, and I think we expected this match to not have a finish. Uh, I think if it was early in the card, it would it would have had like a DQ finish. But being that it was the main event, I could see why they wanted to go one fall to a finish, but. I feel like it, this was just kind of missing something. And one thing that I really miss about wrestling is that when we see two people go at it for the first time, I miss seeing those at the pay-per-views. You know, the first time this person versus this person and, and it's a pay-per-view event. I miss that. I hate watching the match on TV and then getting it again at the pay-per-view. That's That was, you know, one of the reasons, one of my main reasons that I, I kind of quit on WWE was... I was like, well, you keep giving away the match beforehand. Why do? Why the hell do I care to watch it again, you know? So they kind of teased that this might be a first blood match, which that could be very different. It could be very different. What do you think about this main event? And, uh, you know, were you okay getting it before the pay-per-view? Do you kind of wish they would have saved it? Um you know, I, I guess if they're doing a stipulation, you can kind of get away with it. But what do you think? Um, yeah, I would have rather them saved it, save it for the pay per view because you know I was of the mindset, you know, them giving us this match now, obviously it's going to end in a DQ, which will set up the pay per view match. But seeing that we didn't get that, and uh, Taya got the pitfall or the victory, um, I feel like they're in a hard place now because. You know, you're going to have a match at the pay-per-view and assuming that they go with the first blood stipulation or, I mean, I, don't, I think they might, I could see them doing a six sides of steel or, or something of that magnitude. But you kind of, in a, in a sense, Rosemary has to win that match, I would assume, 
But then, too, it's like, do you really want to give Taya her first loss already? Like, it, it's one of those things. And that's another thing that's been, uh, you know, kind of plaguing this company. And even with the OVE LAX feud is tying in, you know, you're booked in a corner where, you know, LAX is beating everyone. You know, you're coming up to the pay-per-view. Who are they going to face? And I feel like with this now, you've given Taya the win. If Taya wins at the pay-per-view, I feel like that's going to hurt Rosemary some a little bit. You know, whereas, you know, you give Rosemary the win, you could extend the feud a little bit. But, uh, um, I mean, as far as the match, it was fine. Um, I like both women a lot, and I have faith they'll deliver at the pay-per-view. I think it'll probably be one of the top three matches. I agree with you. I think I – think, um... I think they save what they're really capable of for the pay-per-view. I really do. I, and I thought the match was cool, but I think the pay-per-view is gonna, match is going to be excellent. Rosemary has to win this. She absolutely cannot lose. You know, she lost to Slammiversary. I think that was her... That wasn't even her first loss because I think she lost in a tag team match prior to that. And then uh, she loses here. So now she's she's a little more vulnerable starting to lose some matches but with that being said in the last few weeks i thought she looked really weak i mean in all the segments she always ended up on her ass you know never got that upper hand so i think this is a little more traditional booking to where you know the baby face gets her come up and set the pay-per-view but i think taya can suffer the loss a lot more than rosemary can at this point i really do kind of a short review for us this week uh you know, as I've said a few times here, I really just have not liked these last few shows, and I'm a little concerned because about this Bound for Glory build. But I think Bound for Glory is going to be good, and I'm really looking forward to the set of tapings afterwards. I think they're going to be excellent. You know, I think we're going to see a lot of new faces, but but who cares? Because they can leave whenever they want. <laughs> right. So, um. But you made a good point. You know, there, there's people on the roster who have, you know, been signed more long term and they're just on the back burner, you know, waiting for their opportunity to step up. And then you've got the people on handshake deals coming in and, and right away taking up TV time. And then it bites us in the ass in that same set of tapings. Because in these next two weeks, how are they going to build the knockouts match even further? I don't see how they can do that. Yeah, I, I, I have some things I want to add if you, you don't mind. Just some quick tidbits. Um, my first thing I will say the one positive that I like and I know you know you mentioned you you're, I don't know if you're much of a fan of OVE the thing that I like about them is the fact that Impact you know brought in a team okay I mean I don't know how familiar were you familiar with them before they they came on board okay I I had never heard of them okay but the fact of the matter is they took a chance in, you know, putting the belts on these guys. It was something new. It was something fresh because we're so accustomed to somebody coming from the other company and getting pushed to the moon. And I feel, you know, with, you know, as dominant as LAX had been, it gave him something. I think the chase, you know, it's it's been interesting. So I like that they were able to do to do that. You know, and then as far as with uh, Moose's feud, I would have preferred – you know, the match be him versus Lashley with Moose going over because Moose is going to be with the company long term. We don't know how, how much longer Lashley is going to be around. So with Moose being around for the foreseeable future, make him look like a star because I I, I like to believe come 2018, he's going to be one of, you know, one of the people in line, you know, competing for the world title. And then my last thing, and it's nothing against Johnny Impact. I was a fan of his, you know, when he wrestled before. But the one thing I will say, and I wonder how the guys, you know, the women and men in the locker room take it, like, that's really got to be a slap in the face. This guy comes in and he's the main event of Bound for Glory. You know, if, if you would have had Johnny Impact on the pay-per-view, you know, in, you know, middle of the card match, fine. But. Impact does this too much, and that's why sometimes some of these people who leave the you know the ones that you know long tenured people or the originals like you kind of could understand because it's like damn I'm here I've been waiting for my shot yet the next person who comes in you know they're gonna get the TV time over me like I'm sure we're gonna get some some uh, debuts or some kind of surprises at Bound for Glory and it's gonna be somebody who's not on the roster whereas somebody who's on the roster waiting for that opportunity you know. 
it just kind of had to sit back and just kind of like ho hum and stuff. And I don't think that's necessarily fair. And I hope moving forward, that's something that they change. I'm all for bringing in new talent, but don't push them ahead of, you know, the people that are waiting for an opportunity. It's one thing if people have gotten chances and they just, you know, fail to deliver, but we don't know what some of these people you know, are capable of, I mean, where's Braxton Sutter, you know, like that guy, it looked like he was gaining, gaining a little bit of steam, you know, had the, the minor angle with, um, Garza, you know, it, it looked like they were going the jealous boyfriend route. He loses the match to Garza and then that's the end. We don't hear from him anymore. You know, he, you know, we see Ali, but we don't see him. So it's, it's, it's those type of things, man. It's just, I wish, you know, I'm hoping one day, you know, they get it together and, you know, treat some of their their loyal uh, wrestlers, you know, better. I'm just going to say that I really hope the next set of tapings, not that I hope, but I expect them to be uh, much better. I, I really think that with this set of tapings, they had to make a lot of edits and a lot of cuts. You know, they had to get a low key out of there as much as possible, Karen and um, Jeff out there out of there as much as possible. Sometimes you can't avoid it. Because it just depends on the angle that was shot. But I feel like there was a lot of stuff. And I might have to hit up some of my friends in the Impact Zone and ask them. I have I, I have to feel that there was more um, more on there. That, you know, like for instance, Taryn Terrell. In these next two weeks, who's to say she didn't have a one-on-one -on -one match against Ali or something like that? They can't play that now. Because they already announced on the show that she wouldn't be at the pay-per-view. You know, I mean, shit. Go through the set of tapings and then make the announcement at the end of the tapings before the pay-per-view. Do something like that. Like, there was just so many ways they could have done this differently. And to me, this was the match I was looking most forward to on the pay-per-view. <laughs> and now I'm, you know, I mean, obviously it's still got Sienna and Ali who are my favorite knockouts. But I just, I'm not excited about it like I was. Yeah. Um, and we didn't, we didn't even get to see Taryn really wrestle, so... <laughs> What's yeah, up? no, I was just wondering, is there any way, I mean, I don't know, you know, as far as business practices, but is there any way where at the start of a new set of tapings, they can get, you know, they can have some kind of agreement with the wrestlers like, hey, your contract is going to commit from this the, this set of tapings. And then, you know, should you ask for a release, it'll be granted after. That way it doesn't reflect negatively on the program. Cause obviously, you know, like with Loki, you know, it, you know, as, as good as it was seeing him as part of LAX, you know, once we knew he was departing, you see him on the screen, it's like, okay, you know, this guy's gone. So I, I don't, I, I don't know if they could do that. I mean, I think that'd be a cool, I, you know, good idea. You know, if you can form that kind of relationship with the talent, you know, if, hey, if you decide that you want your release, we ask, can you at least, you know, can we grant it after the set of tapings and then we'll write you off? That way it doesn't look so bad. But I mean, I don't know. Even with that concept, instead of doing, OK, you're on a four month contract, you're on a six month contract, you know, do it. OK, we know we're going to tape television August 20th. It's going to be done at this time. So. Fix the contract a little bit. Tailor them. Okay, this is a four and a half month contract. It's four months and three weeks. Like something that ensures it protects them and makes it all the way through the set of tapings. Um, there's so many ways they could do this, and and I think what bothers me so much is they're so nonchalant about it. They're just like, oh, you know, this this guy's gone now. Um, and it seems like they're so focused on the outside relationships. You know, like they're doing the um. Impact Pizza, which I think is a great idea, you know, monetizing an after party. And then they came out with a drink, the Atomic Drop, which looks is an alcoholic drink that looks really yeah, good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it um, does. <laughs> I'm like, I'm about to make that at home. Got to figure <laughs> out. How to. But um, I think they're so focused on these outside, you know, how, how do we monetize? How do we make money? How do we make these partnerships? Which is it's all good things. Those are all really good things. But I feel like they're so focused on that, that... They're just letting the creative just go to complete shit. So, you know, we, we have to give them we have to give them a pass a little bit, even though we seem to be give, giving them a lot of passes. We got to give them a little bit of a pass because you know, Jarrett was involved with these tapings. This isn't um, this isn't the new creative team going forward, which I feel like the creative team changes every every set of tapings. But we just we just. Uh, 
I'm just ready to get through these tapings. I'm, I'm excited for the pay-per-view, even though the build's been crap. But I'm still excited for it, and I'm excited for what's to come after it. So, And I think, you know, you mentioned there could be a lot of surprises at Bound for Glory. There's a lot of options. I mean, you know, because we've had the rumors of Tessa Blanchard and Sammy Callahan and um, Jack Swagger. There, there's there's some rumors out there that, you know, um, you know, I, and I really think El Patron, whatever he's doing about for Glory, might actually end up being one of the better segments, <laughs> even though it might not be a match. But uh, yeah, man, you got you got anything else here? Uh, I, w- I wish I could be more excited about what's going on, but I'm really not. Um, you got anything else? Yeah, just my final word is just what they, what the company needs to do. And I've been following the company since 2004. So all the different iterations of Impact I've, you know, been following. What they got to do is they got to get back to what brought the fans in. Like they were providing a product that was different from what you can see elsewhere. And I feel like over the years, you know, they've lost kind of that direction and they've been trying to cater to certain things and you know trying to you know do the whole let's bring this person in push them to the moon you know stuff like that and they've gotten away from what brought them to the dance so i i think if they can get back to that and where you know they're giving us the matches that we want to see and you know putting must see television they'll be fine i think the creative team going forward it's what dia Moore, sanjay and who's the third person Oh God! Uh, well, at least in the ca- case of Diamor and uh, uh, Sanjay, I think they got a good ear for you know the talent and you know what the talent want and you know idea of what the fans want. So that should be promising. But let's just hope you know they can close out the year somewhat strong and provide some kind of stability, and we don't get any more changes. So, and hopefully we know what if Bound for Glory is going to be on the Global Wrestling Network because um, I think Adam actually asked it on the conference call with Josh Matthews and they said they didn't know yet. They, <laughs> it's like, I'm afraid to get it on Fight TV or Pay-Per-View. Well, I'll be on the road, so I can't get it on Pay-Per-View, but on Fight TV or something like that because I don't I don't know if the, the network's going to have it. Yeah, so. exactly. And like what, what – because I'll be honest, I have the app, but I haven't – you know, I've doodled around with it a little bit, but what incentive is it? To, to have it like <laughs> I'll tell you this like you know you go and watch the old episodes of Impact or you know back when they were TNA you know you could really get depressed because it's kind of like damn this company had so much promise what the hell happened and then you think about you know the bad decisions who they brought in and whatnot but yeah that was the biggest thing I was like if they can do something where they'll have pay-per-views on their you know, then, yeah, I'm sold. You know, that, that saves me from going through my pay-per-view provider. But, um, yeah, that I'm waiting on that. That's crazy that they don't know. But, hey, you know, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, you know, some people have asked me to review old pay-per-views on the, on the um, YouTube channel and everything. I'm like, man, I, I can't watch that old stuff. It's depressing. Yeah. Hell, I, I, I can't at all. I'm, I, I watch, you know, Explosion. Um any of the other segments they have i really haven't messed with the app a whole lot only because i mean i like it so far but once they start putting like triple a and crash and no on there like i'll be all up in that business but i i have no desire to watch the old pay-per-views um i i can watch the last couple years you know maybe 2014 2015 um but earlier in that you know it's like you just see the promise that they had um the kind of matches they were delivering and it's just so far from that right now. And it's not to say there's not a lot of talent on the roster. I mean, obviously, um, the, the fans are a big part of it. It's, it's hard to follow the show and and focusing on the fans in the background just sitting there. Yeah, That's why I think, you know, the, the, Can- the Canada tapings are going to be so positive and have a lot of momentum and the wrestlers are going to want to deliver even more. Yeah. And you know what? They just got to go back to, cause even in the early days in, uh, you know, I'll use AJ styles. I think, you know, when he, you know, did depart or even some of these guys that are, you know, talents that do depart, if they've accomplished all they could in impact, 
then hey, cool. You know, I feel like we got the best of that particular wrestler. It's when folks aren't getting the opportunity and then, you know, they're able to be successful elsewhere. It's like, damn, we had this person, you know, and, and in Impact, one thing they've been good at, especially in the early years, is you come over, folks were given an opportunity. You were either going to sink or swim. And I just feel like now, you know, they've fallen too much into, you know, outsider comes, oh, we got to push them to the moon. I, I, I remember one time, when they were negotiating with uh, El Patron, it was rumored that in his contract, he was guaranteed to win the, it was a TNA title at the time. I'm like, how the hell do you guarantee that? You know, why not, you know, have him come over and see how he's received before you start putting him in a title picture. But it's stuff like that. And it just makes me wonder, is that how they sign some of these talents that, you know, came from other places like hey come over you know we'll put you in the main event we'll prominently feature you this that that's bad that's bad business in my opinion i mean if certain guys if they come over and they're a big draw and you know they're bringing money to the company fine but you know uh, we how many people have we seen that they've pushed to the moon and i mean the ratings you know have stayed the same so i was there when he debuted and uh that was when they had to redo it because the the jumbotron misspelled his name but when he actually debuted that pop was crazy like it's just so unfortunate that people didn't really get to see that but but when he showed up you know place went crazy and then he won the title that night i I was like my jaw like dropped i was like they just did it again oh my god you know and obviously they took the title off him you know in a very lazy manner albeit but uh Ooh, this company puts us through uh, some shit, that's for sure. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us this week, talking Impact. I'd, I'm not uh, too optimistic the next couple episodes are going to be much different than the last few, but Bound for Glory is coming, and, uh, you know, the the build to this is so different than Slammiversary, because Slammiversary had a lot of bells and whistles, and this is just, it's just kind of wrestling matches. You know, there's not a whole lot of... Uh, pizzazz like they're trying to put behind Slammiversary which is fine you know I have to I have to believe that they probably put more money into Slammiversary than they made from it but I don't know that this is going to be better than Slammiversary but I think I still think it's going to be pretty good it's just hard to gauge because I mean I can't even think of like three of the matches off the top of my head because the the build and the stories and the shows have been so random you know, just uh. yeah, they got a chance though. The one one thing I think though, and it's just like with Slam Anniversary, because remember leading up to it, they had I forgot what was going on at the time, but if they deliver at Bound for Glory, they could really start off. I guess I mean we've hear <laughs> hear them and say it so often, start off fresh. You know, they you know deliver uh, quality pay-per-view and then you have the set of tapings and you know the tapings deliver you know they can right the wrong so to speak but yeah I, I agree with you it's like this is their biggest show and it just seems like outside of you know, the Taya Rosemary match that I'm sure they're going to announce uh, the uh, 5150 street fight and you know Eli Drake and Johnny Impact I'm just kind of like okay yeah it's, it's uh I don't know. They they do need to put on a good show. It, it's it's important every pay per view that they do. They uh, can't afford to slack. But so that's gonna do it for us this week. We'll be back next week to talk Impact. Hopefully, it's a better episode. Hopefully, we get to know a little bit more about Bound for Glory. And uh, we will talk to you guys next time. Peace.